right, welcome everyone to our fourth Soul Food Gathering. It is so great to see you all here this afternoon. It is my great privilege to introduce to you my colleague from more than 20 years now, Dr. Mike Mitchell, and our absolutely wonderful Oakland University Corral. Give it up for them. And another colleague of mine is running on the stage right now. Give it up for Mr. Sam J. Singham, who teaches South Indian music here at Oakland University. So we're going to open the program today uh, with a composition that was commissioned two years ago by the Baha'is of the Tri-County area. And the Baha'i Faith uh, commissioned this piece for the bicentenary celebration of Baha'u'llah, who is the prophet founder of the Baha'i Faith. And we commissioned a dear friend of mine, Tom Trini, to write this composition, and we asked him to set the following text of Baha'u'llah, which I think is a text that really sets the tone for this soul food event. The utterance of God is a lamp whose light is these words. Ye are the fruits of one tree and the leaves of one branch. Deal ye one with another with the utmost love and harmony with friendliness and fellowship. He who is the day star of truth beareth me witness. So powerful is the light of unity that it can illuminate the whole earth.
Good afternoon. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be part of this wonderful program. I'm Mike Mitchell, as Mark introduced me, the director of the choirs here at Oakland University. I'm, I'm proud to introduce our next guest, my colleague and friend, Mr. Glenn McIntosh is the Vice President for Student Affairs and Chief Diversity Officer at Oakland University and one of the most inspiring figures in our administration. Please welcome Glenn McIntosh. Good afternoon. Are you as excited about this event as I am? I am ready to sit back and see some talent explode on our stage. I was talking to Mr. Doc Holliday a couple minutes ago, and he was talking about his travels, his journey through music, and his tenure with Duke Ellington. And he was talking about how, throughout the legacy of their relationship, he saw how differences came together to create great sounds. And I think that's why we're here tonight. You know, it's funny because if you were to flip open a Bible, it would tell you in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 32, that they ministered with music, meaning they taught, they inspired, and they directed through the use of music. And then if you were to flip over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, it would say faith, hope, and love. And of these three, love, it's the most sacred. And so I think tonight we're here because of loves coming together. Oakland University is proud to host this event. And on behalf of our president, Dr. Oro Peskovich, and our senior level administrations, we thank our music, theater, and dance department, as well as the OU Religious Studies Program for having a vision to put on this program. And we also want to thank the sponsor of this event, the Oakland University City of Pontiac Initiative. That initiative started some five years ago and has seen numerous programs to support Oakland University and the City of Pontiac. The goal of enhancing each other. It's a mutual collaboration where we both benefit. And I think the mayor will be here shortly, Mayor Waterman, and you'll hear from her. But I also want to thank the Pontiac Arts Commission, and two individuals who are really the heart and soul of this event, Dwayne Anthony and Professor Mark Stone. Why don't we give them a round of applause? <laughs> As our Chief Diversity Officer here at Oakland University, I'm in awe to look around this room and see the conversation about diversity, equity, and inclusion played out and lived out by those of you in the audience today. I thank God for your presence, and let's have a wonderful show. Thanks for having me. Thank <laughs> you. 
me tell you of the chapter or two when the Lord God's written his Bible through. And won't you stop? And let me tell you about the chapter or three when the Lord God died on Calvary. And won't you stop? And let me tell you about the chapter or three when the Lord God died on Calvary. And won't you stop? And let me tell you about the chapter or four. He preached the good news unto the sick and the poor. My God is great way to start the soul food gathering. Let's hear it for the Oakland University Chorale under the direction of Dr. Mike Mitchell. Dwayne and I get so excited about putting these programs together. Um, we get to bring many of the finest musicians in Michigan together to share their art with you and the spirit of their music. So I get the privilege of introducing two wonderful individuals now to play. First of all, I'd like to invite to the stage my percussion brother, Mr. Chinolo Amenra, Kresge Award winning artist. <laughs> Chinolo is a wonderful percussionist and we have known each other for a very long time. We studied under a man named Modibo Kieta, who was a generous teacher who taught us the art of African drumming. And Chinalo carries that and continues to teach the next generation. Give it up for Chinalo Amen Ra. <laughs> the next person I'm inviting to the stage is the reason we're doing the Soul Food event 
and the reason I'm here at Oakland University, to be frank, please welcome to the stage Professor Emeritus Marvin Doc Holliday. Doc founded our jazz and our world music program in 1972. And he developed a wonderful program here. He is truly a master educator um, establishing this program. And I am very proud to be able to follow in his footsteps as I now direct the world music program here. And I thank Doc for establishing that program back when I was only two years old. So thank you, Doc. <laughs> as was mentioned by Glenn McIntosh, Doc is not only an amazing educator, he's also, no exaggeration here, one of the greatest baritone saxophonists in the history of jazz. Not only did he play with the famous Duke Ellington Orchestra, but also our much beloved Dizzy Gillespie, played with for many years, and they had a very close bond. And the list goes on and on and on. You just think of the who's who's, Charles Mingus, you name it, he played with everybody. But on a personal note, he has been a mentor to me for many years, both academically, musically, but also quite important to this event, spiritually. And that when I was feeling a bit distraught about things, I called him up. He lives in Ecuador. He, he retired to a very beautiful, warm place, but we still talk all the time. And I called him up and I said, Doc, I, I'm, I'm really frustrated right now. What should we do? And he always has this positive spirit. He said, Mark, you gotta do this thing called soul food. He, it was like it all just came out in one breath and you're gonna do this and you're gonna do this. And I got off that phone call with him and I just talked to my partner, Dwayne, and we did it. And that's what a mentor does. They, they tell you the direction you need to take. So I thank Doc Holliday for this soul food event because it, he's the one who set it in motion with that call some, a few years back. So please, again, welcome back to Oakland University. Marvin, Doc Holliday. I'm not tall enough for that. I've got to get out here where I can see you. Okay. Anyhow, uh, wow. I'm impressed with who I am. <laughs> I didn't think it would, I didn't think that was, uh, well, never mind. <laughs> Probably just as well. Uh, two things. Well, one, I was going to, I had a couple, you notice I got my speech in my hand because I used to walk up and down in front of my classes and off the top of my head, everything came out. At this age, I'm lucky to remember anything. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, I guess. Okay, anyhow, you know, I have to, I have to introduce this one. Okay, Johann Sebastian Bach, 200 years before we, uh, the, the originator of, of, of this event, basically, this, they brought soul food into, into existence, made the statement that to his students, that every note you play or you create must be for the glorification of God. Do I get an amen on that one, folks? Okay. <laughs> now, let me read to you my little line of notes that I made out for myself here. Okay, I said, I, I wanted to say, I may, if I may, I would like to share with you a few things that I was aware of during my years here and have found them growing in clarity 
as the years have passed that really relates to what the expression soul food really means. As we are all in this together, now think about that. That's what, that's what leading to what I'm going to say next, really. Seriously, think about it. And everything that is going on around us, and even worse sometimes around the world. We're in a different situation now than we were when I was here in 1972, as you said. You know, I'm really, it's a whole different thing. Okay. Wow. I could really go, I really could stand here and talk for a long time, but I won't. Uh, but I do want to read this one. This is a quote from Abdu'l Baha. Okay. <sighs> and this is important. Now is the time for the lovers of God to raise high the banners of unity, to intone in assemblages of the world the verses of friendship and love and to demonstrate to all that the grace of God is one. Thus will the tabernacles of holiness be upraised on the summits of the earth, gathering all peoples into the protective shadow of the world of oneness. This great bounty will dawn over the world at a time when the lovers of God shall arise to carry out his teachings and to scatter far and wide the fresh, sweet sense of universal love. Folks, that's what soul food is is about. Okay? I really thought, I hello? Hello? All right. Whoa, there it is. Okay, there I am. How about that? Anyhow, uh, I don't know what I'm doing here now, but anyhow. <laughs> that was really what I came to say. And uh, whatever comes out of this horn, this bamboo thing here, it's called a to bay. Notice that? A to bay. You got to go up on that last syllable or it means something else. I ain't going to tell you what that is that you just said. Okay. Attend to Bain. Thank you. It's a Ghanaian, or a Shanti really, an Ashanti flute from the area of Ghana in West Africa. I've been pleased to have played this thing for quite a few years. Uh, may not sound like it, but uh, I've done it for quite a few years. Anyhow. Here we go. We're going to do so. Oh, luminous continent. That's what it says, right, in, the, in your program. The luminous continent. So many, many, many years I grew up listening to the dark continent and the uh, things, negative comments of what Africa was or is at that time. And it was later that I became aware of where so much marvelous music and the essences of music came from this continent. That's the reason why Shoghi Effendi started it and I'm carrying it on 
we refer to it now as the luminous continent. I don't want to hear dark ever again. I'm sorry, it's true. Okay, here we go, fellas. I have no idea what's coming. Of course, no, you don't either. <laughs> I'll have, I could give you a lecture on that by itself. Okay.
Once again, let's hear it. Marvin Doc Holliday. A OU legend. Also, Chinalo Amin Ra. Thank you so much. We are really blessed in our music community here in Michigan to quite literally have some of the greatest Middle Eastern musicians in the world living here in Southeast Michigan. I mean, just over the years, I have heard so many incredibly talented people from the Middle East or with roots in the Middle East sharing their music. But we have two of the best I've ever heard here today, so please, Welcome to the stage, Victor Ghanem and Khalid Gomar. <laughs> Chino Lo and I first heard these guys at a, a world music event in the middle of the state, and we were just so blown away. I, I kept calling up Victor. I said, oh, we got to do this. He's a busy guy, but finally, after over a year of trying, I got him to OU. So let this be the first of many times visiting our university, both of you. Thank you. Well, it is our pleasure and our honor to be among you, ladies and gentlemen. And Mark, you're very kind, by the way. I think he's been known to exaggerate. I mean, it goes without saying, the role of musical notes has in our society, in our lives, in our religion, in our faith, in our spirituality. In the religious institutions, whether they call it chanting or singing, call it what you want. I mean, it's, music is such a big part of it and a way to express what we cannot do with mere words. And we're, you know, we're here just for a short time. We want to try to give you a little bit of a taste of what we do. And my friend and colleague Khaled, he is an educator from the country of Iraq. He's originally Kurdish, which uh, I guess uh, he was telling me the, the connection between geography and the Iraqi scales. They were used, you know, to designate certain regions of the country, and then, you know, in a religious sense, and then. It came back and, and they became musical skills for, for popular music. So he will demonstrate some of the beats as well. So hope you enjoy it. So his English, he, uh, is this microphone on? Yes, his English uh, is a little bit lacking right now, so <laughs> bear with him. I will try, and my Arabic is not the best, by the way. So he's, <laughs> I'll try my best. Uh, Saeed وسعيد بوجودكم ومشاركتي مع هاي الفرقة الرائعة والأستاذ فكتور غنام. It's his honor, his pleasure to be among you and to be a part of the uh, wonderful musicians on the stage and to present some of the culture from his home country. وسوف أقدم لكم بعض من اللقاءات التي تخص بلدي العراق. These are certain rhythms and beats that are you know, distinct to the country of Iraq, so he will demonstrate them now.
That was called A Night of Love, which is why we're all here, right? But it's afternoon.
Switch gears here. This is called a banjo, by the way. Let's give him another hand, come on.
first and foremost, I want us all to give the God of love a great big praise. Come on, put your hands together. Yes. You know, soul food is like a musical gumbo. You know, we, we add all the different flavors of music uh, for you to appreciate. You know, if you're not from a particular country or from a particular place, you may not always understand, but you understand the heart of the musician. You understand that they're playing from their soul. So soul food is just a collection of all of us who love music, who love people, who love humanity, to come together and share with one another. It's truly a blessing to be a part of such a universal effort. I am so glad that me and my brother Mark Stone have been able to do this for the last uh, four years. Uh, we've met and, and seen some great musicians, some great people, period. And it's always been a blessing to be able to bless someone else. All right, so right now I want to bring to the stage two brothers who were here last year. Uh, they were extremely, uh, blessed us extremely uh, with their talents and their skills. Uh, their names are Rolando and Yabara and Fortino Yabara, the brothers. Uh, we feel very blessed to have uh, been invited back to do Soul Food. We did it last year and we just absolutely loved it. So this is awesome to come back and do this again. Hello. Uh, the first song we're going to do is a song that we wrote. Um, we go through our lives hearing uh, a lot of negative comments and sometimes uh, people unfortunately start to believe the negative things they hear about themselves um, and start to hate themselves. So uh, there had been so much of that going on recently uh, since the last time we played here that we decided we should write a song about it and it's called Brown is Beautiful and we're gonna play it right now. Next song is a uh, is another cumbia. That first song was a cumbia, and uh, this next song is also a cumbia. And it's uh, it's actually about my wife. She's sitting over there, and uh, I wrote the song about her. So I'm gonna play it. Stand up, Benya. <laughs> Oye, ahorita que nos gusta canela, quieres 
quieres casar conmigo, robaste mi corazón y sin ti no puedo vivir, y sin ti no puedo vivir, y sin ti no puedo vivir, güerita, güerita, solo no me dejes, güerita, güerita, otra vez, güerita, güerita, don't leave me alone, güerita, güerita, ay mi corazón, mi corazón, mi corazón, Oye, ahorita que no gusta canela, quieres casar conmigo, robaste mi corazón. Sin ti no puedo vivir, sin ti no puedo vivir, y sin ti no puedo vivir. Güerita, güerita, solo no me dejes, güerita, güerita, otra vez, güerita, güerita. Las mi corazón para para pom pom. 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 Mi corazón This, uh, this last song we're going to do, I wrote, um, at the time I was seeing uh, a lot of division and, you know, uh, a lot of people wanted to uh, maybe build up walls or something. Um, but uh, the way I see it, I mean, we're all, you know, I can say this, we're all children of God, right? We're more alike than we are different. And uh, at some point in the song, we sing a line that says, uh, I don't know where you come from, and I don't really care, because we're all global citizens. We all breathe the same air. And to me, we're all, we're all the more, like I said, we're all more uh, alike than we are different. And you know, this song is called Sangre Emigrante, especially here in the United States. Uh, a lot of us tend to forget that we are all children of immigrants, and we're all, most of us anyway, right? We're children from uh, somewhere else, and uh, we're just kind of one big conglomerate here. So this song is about that. Mi piel y me dices regresa a mi país, pero no sabías que yo nací aquí. Aunque mi sangre no fue como tu sangre, aunque mi sangre no fue como tu sangre, todos tenemos sangre inmigrante. Todos tenemos sangre inmigrante. 
Este no tiene el derecho para elegir quién se queda y quién sale, porque todos tenemos sangre inmigrante. Right now, I want to introduce to you someone who, uh, who I've been amazed at for many years now, um, how uh, she was able to take a city that was falling apart uh, at the seams, uh, seeming to be going down and down and down, and she was able uh, to turn it around in such a rate that, uh, to this day, uh, is amazing to me. I know when she first took office, there was a a deficit and now there's a surplus. <laughs> she has turned the city around. She has been awarded so many awards uh, from uh, Essence Woke Magazine, Essence Magazine, the 100 Woke Women. Uh, she's been awarded uh, such awards as Wonder Woman. Uh, she's been uh, awarded so many different honors, Crane's Business uh, Awards. Uh, Mayor Waterman has done tremendous things for the city of Pontiac. And I am so proud to introduce her right now. Let's put our hands together for her right now for a minute here. But I saw something, I saw something this morning on Channel 7 Action News uh, that uh, was to me was a, a, a gesture of care and concern. Um, there were some citizens in the city of Pontiac who were without heat because of their landlords. And Mayor Waterman actually reached into her pocket to put them in a hotel for the night to keep them and their families warm. Put your hands up. And that's just, you don't get that. You don't get that from, you know, from anybody who's just trying to run a city, but someone who cares about the residents and the people. So once again, let's put our hands together for Mayor Deirdre Waterman. Put your hands together. Thank you, Duane, and thank you for all of you for coming and supporting this. Hasn't this been a delightful, delightful yeah. afternoon? We see now why music is a universal language. And Doc Holliday, you can probably give us a better definition or a lecture about why that is. You know, music is a universal language. But music is, is everywhere. It's all around us. It makes our lives better and richer. And certainly we can see by these amazing performers tonight that we go away, every one of us goes away uplifted and just inspired and just seeing how we are part 
of the human core, the humankind, and we all are inspired by music. So we thank you for putting on this program uh, Professor Mark Stone and uh, Dwayne Lyons, who's an art commissioner and also the community relations specialist for the city of Pontiac. And you have been the art pillars for this Pontiac Oakland University initiative that's gone on now for five years. Uh, and one of the staples of this initiative, which has had many different components and many different activities, that soul food has been a staple from the beginning. This is now staple uh, soul food four. Uh, I was there to inaugurate uh, soul food one at the Creative Arts Center, and it's going to come back for soul food five uh, this summer. We've got to keep this going. All right. So thank you, um, Mark and Dwayne, and for all of the performers who come and lend their amazing, extraordinary talents to show us uh, why we are all bound together uh, on this planet called Earth uh, with various things that we share, and music is one of them that we have the honor to share together. So with that, uh, we want to know that this will continue. Uh, one of the things that we are doing under the partnership or the initiative between Oakland University and the city of Pontiac is uh, for this year, we actually were able to support some of the initiatives by giving uh, money, grant awards, uh, to sustain them. And Soul Food was one of the grant awards that we gave because we thought uh, of all the things that express what the initiative could be, should be, in terms of our mutual interest, that Soul Food should continue uh, as one of the arts components. So with that, uh, I go back to my seat to again enjoy uh, Soul Food. And I'm so happy that all of you who have come to support this initiative will continue to do so and will be enriched by the afternoon that you spend here. She makes me proud. <laughs> All right, so this next uh, group of performers um, are so special uh, to me because, first of all, uh, the founder of the group, uh, Mark Stone, and he hates for me to call him professor, but I, I do call him professor, and when I call him professor, he calls me pastor. <laughs> so, you know, we keep it simple. <laughs> But a funny story, I'm not going to take long because Mark told me don't talk too much, but uh, when we first met each other, uh, we were working on the first Soul Food, and uh, uh, we had been working together for a long time, and I uh, said, I'm about, I'm about to go home. And he went, where you live at? And I said, uh, I live in Kegel Harbor. And he says, I live in Kegel Harbor. He said, what street you live on? I said, I live on Pine Lake Avenue. He said, I live on Pine Lake Avenue. He said, what's your address? He said, I'm five houses down from you, man. <laughs> So we had unity from the beginning, didn't know we lived in the same block, in the same city, but it's amazing. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Mark Stone and the Stone Sound Collective. All right, so this is a, a relatively new group, just put together in the last year. I already introduced uh, Chinolo Amenra, like to also at this time introduce Matt Dufresne, our saxophonist in the group. And I'd like to ask uh, both uh, Chino Lo uh, and Matt uh, to, to share something from the mic with all of you before we play. Um, Matt and I also go way back. We were students together, came into the University of Michigan together as, as freshmen. Matt is one of the best saxophonist I've ever worked with, both classical saxophonist and jazz saxophonist, and we've been exploring Carnatic music together more recently. So give it up for Matt Dufresne. Peace and love, human family. Thank you all for the support, seriously. So I'm Chinelo Amin Ra. One of the things that I love about this group, this collective, is that such a diverse range of people, and that reflects the world, and we all work to get along, which should reflect the world. So that's what we're striving for. So I'm just gonna share a little bit about some of the things that I believe. Uh, my father and my mother from an early age encouraged me to, to seek. They said, 
nobody is right, nobody is the only one, this, that, and the other in terms of religion. You have to find these things for yourself. You have to find your spirituality. And so I've taken that thread and explored different things, read different things. And one of the things that I've come across is the Tasawuf or Sufi, the Islamic mystic system. It's very interesting. And so getting into Islam, um, of course, the Prophet Muhammad, but his cousin, I would like to read two things from Ali ibn Abi Talib. So the first saying that words are under your control until you speak them. But you come under their control once you have spoken. Have to be mindful of what we speak always. And secondly, a moment of patience in a moment of anger prevents a thousand moments of regret. So that's my contribution. Thank you. Peace and love. Enjoy. Our first song is by Mark and I, a friend of Mark and I named Roger Braun, and it carries the themes of uh, John Coltrane's A Love Supreme. So I thought I'd read some of what John said about that recording. All praise, all praise be to God, to whom all praise is due. Let us pursue him in the righteous path. Yes, it is true. Seek and you shall find. Only through him can we know the most wondrous, wondrous bequeathal. During the year 1957, I experienced by the grace of God a spiritual awakening which was to lead me to a richer, fuller, more productive life. At that time, in gratitude, I humbly, humbly asked him to be forgive, to given the means and privilege to make others happy through music. I feel this has been granted through his grace. All praise to God. John Coltrane.
I didn't forget the other two members of the group. I'd like them to also share something with you. I have also known Abby Alwyn for, for a long time, going back to when we were students at the University of Michigan together. In fact, uh, Abby and Matt and I were some of the first students in an ensemble that really changed our lives called the Creative Arts Orchestra. And uh, it was great playing with Abby again. Also, I already introduced him. He played with me on the very first piece. I'm proud to have him as my colleague here at Oakland University. Please welcome, again, back to the stage, Sam J. Singham, along with the wonderful Abby Alwyn. Good afternoon, everyone. It's so, so wonderful to be here with all of you to share this celebration of life. Um, my background is very mixed. My mother is um, Quaker, if you know the, uh, the um, Society of Friends. And they believe that um, there's that of God in every person. And that our connection to God is very personal. And they're also pacifists. And believe that there's no way that violence can bring us towards peace. That the, the, the walk towards peace has to be peaceful. Um, I'd like to share a poem that's been with me this week very profoundly. Um, as many of you may know of uh, the poet Mary Oliver. She just, this last week, passed away, and she's just an incredible poet. And she speaks to, to the power of nature to inform us of, of our lives and what's profound in our lives. So I'd like to read this poem. It's called The Peonies. hard to find the light here. Okay. Uh, okay, here we go. This morning, the green fists of the peonies are getting ready to break my heart. As the sun rises, as the sun strokes them with his old buttery fingers, and they open. Pools of lace, white and pink, and all day the black ants climb over them boring their deep and mysterious holes into the curls, craving the sweet sap, taking it away to their dark underground cities. And all day under the shifty wind and in a dance to the great wedding, the flowers bend their bright bodies and tip their fragrance to the air and rise, their red stems, holding all that dampness and recklessness gladly and lightly, and there it is again. Beauty, the brave, the exemplary, blazing open. Do you love this world? Do you cherish your humble and silky life? Do you adore the green grass with its terror beneath? Do you also hurry, half-dressed and barefoot, into the garden and softly and exclaiming of their dearness, fill your arms with the white and pink flowers, with their honeyed heaviness, their lush trembling, their eagerness to be wild and perfect for a moment before they are nothing forever? Bang. <laughs> Big bang, not bang bang, but bang. The scientists say the universe started from a point called singularity and exploded into what is now. Hindu scriptures thousands of years ago said the same thing. The universe started from nothingness and started to evolve. The bang is called the primordial sound, Om. That's what we practice when you practice yoga. Oh, uh, if you listen to the ocean, there's the Om, everlasting, ever-present sound, Om. Symbolically, Lord Shiva, the, dance, uh, the master of dance, is dancing ferociously to represent 
this turbulence when it unfolds, when the universe starts, and then he ends. He is accompanied by the Lord of Drums, Nandi. He is also playing a divine percussion instrument called Murdangam, which has a resounding Om sound to it, which I will be playing later. So let's hope we focus the faith, focus, and love to embrace this oneness, to bring about a world peace and harmony in the future. So the next piece we're going to play is called Nandi. Professor Mark Stone has brilliantly embraced some of the complex rhythms from the Indian subcontinent to blend with the East, West, and South African rhythms and melody to create this piece. Hope you'll enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, Nandi. Thank you. 
Welcome back to the stage, my neighbor <laughs> and my soul food brother, Dwayne Anthony Lyons. Let's give it up for Dwayne. This event, our fourth one now working together, would not take place without the very hard work. Dwayne Anthony, his title with the city of Pontiac is Community Relations Specialist. You can see right now as he's helping the choir onto the stage how well he does his job. And I am, am so happy 
that Mayor Waterman asked both Dwayne and I to be Arts Commissioners for the City of Pontiac. I love working as an Arts Commissioner. I love being part of the OU Pontiac Initiative. Dwayne is the Pontiac Arts and Culture Area Leader for the OU Pontiac Initiative and I'm the OU side of it. So coming up on the stage right now is the Pontiac Citywide Choir Union. This group truly embodies what the Soul Food event is about. Not just something they started two years ago like Dwayne and I did, but something that goes back to the 1940s. All the way back. You see, the last word in the choir's title here, union. They wanted to unify our area. And the Pontiac Citywide Choir Union is made up of churches from throughout the city. Uh, I believe eight churches in total from throughout the city and they come together. Just a wonderful group. We loved their performance last year and it's so great to be able to welcome them again back to our stage. So please give a warm Oakland University welcome to the Pontiac Citywide Choir Union. One, two. Can you see me back there? All right, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I see. All right, let's put our hands together again for this great event. All right, put your hands together for me, please. I know some of us in here have different beliefs and different religions and different cultures, but the whole gist of this wonderful gathering is that we're all human. And we're all one humanity. And though we have our differences, we do have commonalities that we all share. And those of you who have a different religion than uh, maybe we do, I know you love your God. We definitely love our God. We love our God more than anything. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the Bible clearly says that there is always a struggle between the flesh and the spirit. But our souls, our, our souls, from the midst of our souls, we love God. We're not perfect. But in our souls, we have been reborn. And the flesh will war against the spirit because the spirit is lifting up Jesus. Amen. So we just like to lift up his name today. Give him all the glory, the honor, and the praise for he is truly worthy. He is truly worthy.
need you. to dance. We bow in reverence. We live. Out of the depths of our hearts, we learn to laugh. To paraphrase scholar and humanitarian William Edward Dubois, there's always a worry. There's a thought. There's a, pound, a, a pondering and an, an inquiry. Can we live in the tension of two-ness? Are we double-minded or are we perplexed by the dichotomies and paradoxical things of life. Is there two souls, two thoughts, two conflicting ideas, a 
an unreconcilable striving while we're matriculating in the universe. From the depths of our soul, we hear the insatiable and sensational, uncompromising melodies of love. It's yours for the asking tonight. Grab hold because time is filled with swift transition. Nothing in this earth unmoved will ever stand. So tonight I, I, I really encourage you to build your hope on things that's not corruptible or the, ru or the, moth, the rust may debilitate it, but build your hopes on things eternal. Trust in him who will not leave you. There will be a lot of different movements in life. So whatever the years may bring, if by chance, whether unintentional or intentionally, friends and family forsake you, there is one that will stick closer than a brother. There is no fault of failing, the slipping, or flaw in him. So lean closely to his hand. Tonight I encourage you to hold to God's unchanging hand. Educator, author and educator, Dr. Carter Gatson Woodson, dean of, of a HBCU called Howard University said, real education, if we're going to educate the minds of the next generation, it means to inspire them, to inspire traditional and non-traditional students, people of every creed, color, and race, to live more abundantly. Real education means to learn to begin to live life as we find it, but never stop or settle there. But we must strive daily, every minute, every second, every hour, every day, to make it better than we found it. Real education propels you to move from your comfort into hearing the clarion sound of that still, small voice that says, be a part of more than yourself. In an iPod, iPhone, and I can say this because I was the design, well, on the design team, I led it. In an iPad and I everything world, we find the quintessence of inspiration not in the I, but in the we. We must look beyond ourselves. The purest form of inspiration can only be found when we force ourselves out of our own presuppositions. When we move beyond our traditions, don't leave them, but move beyond them. And even sometimes our own cultural biases to consider whether you embrace or ac accept or embrace it you must at least consider the possibility that there is an infinite truth that we can and that we must all learn to, to clothe ourselves in. It is the message of hope. It is the euphoria of love. The writer in the New Testament writing said, in 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, now there is three, faith, now there is three, hope, faith, love. 
but the greatest of thee shall always be loved. No man, no woman, no boy nor girl knows what is truly possible or what he or she can accomplish until you try. How many times have you thought, I think I should, maybe I can. Whatever the malady, whatever the fight, if you hear the unction of your soul, if you hear the gentle whisper in your spirit, do something. Move. Get up. This one is for you. Then hold fast because you are the answer the world has been looking for. I challenge you tonight from Morehouse and College, Benjamin, former president Benjamin E. May said, from the hollow graves and the steel walls of that great institution. You have but one minute tonight. There's only 60 seconds in it. You didn't choose it. You didn't ask for it. It maybe have even been forced upon you, but you can't refuse it tonight. You didn't seek it. It's only a minute. It's up to you to use it because eternity's in it. Sometimes life will try to debilitate your passion. It only comes to pacify the stirring of your soul cry. It only tantalizes that unquenchable thirst that says there's got to be something more than this existence. But hold fast, because God has a promise for you. He's going to give you beauty for ashes, joy for your sorrow. When it seems that life is just mundane and the zest of new horizons have passed and gone, God promised to give strength in your weakness and hope for your health. Okay. Okay. As I close this evening, I pray this blessing of the Lord upon you, that the words of the Lord will have free course in your life, and that he will be glorified in and through you, that you'll be delivered from unreasonable and unreasonable friends and wicked men, and all the men will know you by the faith you bear. God bless you tonight and go in peace. And may the peace of God go with you. Let's give Fanny another, Fanny another hand, Minister Fanny Eaton. Another hand.
Okay. While we're gathering on the stage, I'd like to make just a couple of comments. One, you have all been embraced by the beauty and wonder of these different musical expressions and have been moved by that wonder and delight. Yes, we are all pleased by this incredible difference. Take a moment to consider this feeling because it's everywhere. One quotation I'd like to share. Well, first maybe I should say this, that soul food was first started in Australia. It was recognized and brought to my, where I live now in Ecuador. And it is every, the first Sunday of every month we have soul food. And Mark has brought soul food to y'all. I mean, all of you, okay? Right. Now, um, I just had one, <laughs> all of my students will recognize the fact that I have said time and time and time again, the music doesn't come from you. You want to share it? It comes through you. Amen. Yes, yes. And we know where that comes from, don't we? We've heard it expressed in many, many different ways this evening. And I think it's marvelous. Now let me finish with this one quote, because I think it's very profound. The art of music must be brought to the highest stage of development. For this is one of the most wonderful arts in this glorious age of unity. It is highly essential to gain its mastery. However, one must endeavor to attain the degree of artistic perfection and not to be like those who leave things unfinished. Think about it. That's a very profound statement because who could leave things unfinished when it is that source through which all of this music and this delightful energy of excitement and, and oneness of participation comes through. God bless you all. All right, we're going to play a song we're all going to sing together. Can I get y'all, this is the last song, can I get y'all stand up with us? Come on, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. We're going to have this all together. We're going to unify one another. I want y'all to clap y'all hands. I want y'all to sing. If you know the song.